Thanks so much, Drew, for the invitation uh, today. When I got the question, you know, what's it been like planting a church in a pandemic? I'm like, well, do we have five hours on this topic? Um, but I, we don't have five hours, but I, I was remembering yesterday, actually, when um, you had invited me, it was so grateful to, to share, I think, at one of these gatherings back in May, I think, and about where we were at planting Hope Nomad then. And there were three things that I shared. Um, some of you may have heard that talk, um, but the three things that God had spoken to me when the pandemic hit and sort of after the shock wore off and it was like, okay, God, what is going on now? Um, there were three distinct things that God said to me in that time. The first was trust me. The second was keep going. And the third was don't miss what I'm doing. And it's funny because I, I recently did an interview uh, with a global leadership network that was published um, and the author titled it, um, New Church Planted in New York City During Global Pandemic is an Act of Faith. And I mean, I didn't give her that title. That was her title. And some might say it was an act of faith. Um, but I might also add that some said, you know, it's kind of an act of crazy, Kathy, what are you doing? <laughs> and um, I'm, uh, I'm, I was well aware at the time that it was a little bit of an act of crazy. And there were many sleepless nights where I was like, what on earth, God is going on? What are we doing here? But um, I just wanted to share briefly with you all today, just a couple of things that I do know, uh, seven months later. Um, the first thing is, it's been really hard. Um, it's been really hard. And the second thing is, at the same time, it has been one of the greatest adventures I have ever been on with the Lord um, since I started my relationship with him way back in high school. And um, so I'm going to speak into two of both of those things a little bit, just to give you a little bit of background about, you know, what's been happening with Hope Nomad and, and myself pastoring during this. Um, where it's been hard, um, number one is, is people. Um, people, uh, we know there was a, a lot of mass kind of mass exodus of people in the city um, after COVID hit. It's still happening. Um, we saw another kind of exodus in the summer and, and, and there were due to so many different reasons. Um, job loss, um, not being able to afford, you know, the economic ramifications of that, being able to stay here in the city, very expensive city to live in. Um, so, so some had lost jobs, some had... Um, you know, went to go back and be with family in different parts of the country. Um, some had lost loved ones. We know many people, um, either even if we weren't impacted directly by losing a loved one through COVID, we know others that have been. Um, on top of the fact that normal loss is, is continuing to happen in life, right? And the natural causes of of um, having to say goodbye to loved ones are compounded by um, the numbers of deaths that we've experienced here in the city. So, um, so people, I think, was was one of the hardest things is that we were like nomads, um, very much sort of scattered uh, when COVID first hit, and are still dealing with that um, scattering of not having our whole team, you know, kind of cohesively um, together, even. Um, some other hard areas were uh, certainly, again, the ramifications of the economic impact on our city um, and the way of financing things that um, we thought, you know, financial streams we thought were were in place that we had budgeted for, you know, fell through, causing us to have to make some, you know, severe uh, budget cuts and salary cuts that we're still living with today, um, and having to really, uh, you know, lean out um, some of the the implications of of our what the budget we had planned for and now where we're at today, uh, but more on that in a moment. Um, the digital pivot uh, was incredibly hard. Uh, anyone on this call who knows me knows that I am highly relational. Um, starting a church digitally was not at all what I wanted to do. I would have never chosen it. Um, it's been a challenge. Uh, it's been hard. Um, and then, then to make almost to make it worse in November, we had two beautiful in person services at our new chapel here on 31st Street, only to then have to shut down again and go back online. So it was like we had this little taste of wow, being in worship together in person for a moment. And then it was back to digital where, where we're at right now. Um, and, you know, if I'm being honest personally, uh, where it's been hard is my own struggle and weaknesses. Um, I tend to, uh, the first thing to go for me in, in stressful situations, especially in the layering type of stress we've been dealing with in the pandemic, um, is in the area of self-care. 
So being able to realize I have limitations. <laughs> um, I have to watch, you know, constantly watch how I balance my, my work life, my propensity to, you know, work all the time and my family. And realizing that in, this, in these digital spaces as well, there's an emotional and mental toll that it's taken on me. And as a pastor, the most important thing for me is that I am prioritizing uh, my relationship with God, my, my own self-care, how I, how I tend to not just my time with the Lord, but how I care for myself, how I care for my body, how I care for my, uh, my mental and emotional health. So, so that's been hard. Um, and then lastly, sort of this constant, what, I, what I'm identifying now is this constant uh, state of lament. <laughs> daily realizing that there are still things even you know here we are at the end of the year um whether they are hopes wishes dreams plans that we've had that i've had um lamenting the loss of those things and not realizing fully the impact of that really on a daily basis um, when we started our, our vision meetings as drew mentioned back in january of 2020 um you know we we had dreams we had plans, we had things that we thought God was calling us to do. And um, so continuing to sort of recognize where those things are and also grieving the, the reality that we are uh, still in an unknown future, aren't we? We don't know when this is going to sort of end, if you will, um, what the new normal is going to look like in our city. Um, and, and I would say mostly though, grieving also for people and the the loneliness they are feeling the lostness they are feeling the loss of connection they are feeling and that being a very real need and dealing with the hardships and uh, complexities of reaching people when we can't be you know in in person or in close proximity um and sort of navigating the challenges around that so those are definitely some areas where it has been hard in terms of planting uh, Hope Nomad, but I also need to pivot to the second point, which is that this has been the greatest adventure <laughs> I have been on with the Lord um, in, in many years of ministry. And some of the ways that that has been a great adventure is God has met me in deeper ways than I could have imagined in my, in my lament. Um, acknowledging my men, lament and asking the Lord, can you meet me here, Lord? And sometimes that's daily. Lord, can you meet me in my brokenness? Can you meet me in my, my grief? And, and acknowledging that there are so many who are grieving right now, so many big things and layer upon layer of loss, um, but not minimizing my own loss in the midst of that, but acknowledging it and taking it to the Lord and saying, Lord, it's okay. And it's necessary to lament those things that we've lost, even if they're as simple as a hope or a dream. Um, and, and the Lord has met me in showing me my limitations, as I mentioned, and where I need continued growth and my own boundaries uh, as it relates to part of my self-care. Um, and in the way of finances, you know, the Lord has provided for our church plant exactly what we've needed at exactly the right time and exactly the right way and in and, and ways that he could only he could only take the credit and the glory for it. It's nothing of our own doing. We um, are so blessed to have partnerships with uh, City to City. Um, Drew Hyun, Hope Midtown has, has been generous to us. We have uh, our denominational affiliation that we are, are connected to that we have been provided for in ways that I would have never expected or planned for. And so we are, are just incredibly great for that. And what a great adventure of, of the ability to build trust you know, in the Lord's provision for us, um, we started our first online digital service on Pentecost Sunday, which is a very what was a very significant date for us that we identified as the date we wanted to start our church on May 31st of this year. Um, it was intended to be in person, but it ended up being online. And and one of the reasons it was such a significant uh, day for us to to you know get that first corporate service out there was um, really we had focused a lot on Acts two. Um, I'll read to you just a couple verses from the passage. If you you know the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit came down and descended on um, the early Christian followers and, and, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. And uh, verse 42 says, they devoted themselves to the apostles teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. And this was our key verse. 
all the believers were together and had everything in common. And so we have um, made you know, great effort on this adventure with the Lord to, to, to be together in the ways that we are able to be together and be creative about how we're doing that. Um, a couple of amazing things that have happened that I, I would be remiss to not share with you. Uh, exciting, adventurous things, wonderful things, um, provisional things. Five months after our first service, uh, this past November 19th, we celebrated our first baptism. Um, it was in person and small uh, on our rooftop here at the building. And I call it the pour over because of the COVID limitations. We couldn't quite do full immersion. We didn't want to quite do sprinkle. So we did a pour over and it was incredible and beautiful a young woman. Um, decided to take that step of faith with our community. And it was such a blessing and we were in awe of how God um, brought all of that together. Um, in the last six months, we have also discipled over 60 people through our Emotionally Healthy Discipleship courses on Zoom. We started doing them right on Zoom in June, including our Emotionally Healthy Activist course, which we started in July to really address specifically the justice issues and racial reconciliation um, issues that were happening at the time. And that's a, a, a key value value of ours to keep that at the forefront. Um, and these courses have been powerful and life-changing for so many people. I know many of you use them, um, but to be able to disciple all those people through a Zoom platform has been incredible. A um, couple other quick things. In October, we were able to give away you know, 500 PPE kits to our neighbors in Madison Square Park and Bellevue South Park, um, just to bless them in a practical way with no strings attached. But hey, we want to we wanna give you a mask. We want to give you hand sanitizer. How can we help you and be a presence of the gospel in our neighborhood. We uh, host creative writers groups. Uh, Bi-monthly, we have a very creative community uh, where people worship through writing, and that group has hosted already two outdoor live poetry short story readings on the rooftop of our building, which is a safe space for people to come who may not want to come to a church service, but can come and hang out with us and, and hear some great poetry and, and uh, connect with people. Uh, next week, we're going Christmas caroling. We're handing out candy canes, and we're also, we've got a fundraiser coming up for a great organization called Reveal Beauty which uh, supports female survivors of domestic violence and sex trafficking through empowerment and celebration. So, so these are just a few things that God has been doing in our community, uh, which have been an adventure. And just circling back to what God has been saying to me, um, you know, what is God saying to the church? I can only personally speak to what God has been saying to me. Um, we were only able to accomplish these things this fall because God specifically told me two, two more things in August. The first was focus on Monday to Saturday. Focus on Monday to Saturday. Focus on relationships. He said, I know your past understanding of church was focus on Sundays, focus on the worship, corporate worship, but I want you to get creative on Monday through Saturday. Create spaces for outreach, for, for mission, for meeting people where they're at. Really important piece of what we've been doing. And then secondly, he specifically said to me, pour into your core team of leaders pour into your leaders so that they can multiply disciples and do that in a healthy way. And with, with the limitations on us socially, we can't connect with everyone now. As a pastor, I'm limited. I can't connect with every single person in our community. But if I'm pouring my energy and my resources and my life into this core group of young leaders, they are our future. Our young leaders are our future. And so it's not about metrics. It's not about how many people are coming on a Sunday anymore. It's about living out the gospel and pouring out our lives for others. So this is how the Lord's been speaking to me. Um, hope some of it's helpful. Uh, Drew, I'll turn it back over to you. Thanks for the opportunity.